The time is upon us. Let's open up Unity and get started. What we're going to be doing in this chapter is creating a project from scratch with the end goal of building a template that there will be something very reusable for your project work in the future. It'll be something in which you can then just extract the SketchUp model from it, throw it away, and stick a new one in there and, and replicate just a couple of changes and be ready to go. Um, you'll be able to use it even for internal project review uh, because the, I think the process will be so quick for you. So let's find a home for this. I'm going to just name this, how about VR0? We'll make a new folder for it. New folder, VR underscore zero zero. VR. We don't need to use these analytics. We can skip that and then just a 3D template. Great project. The end goal for this template that we're aiming at is something that would let you evaluate uh, height, which is kind of what the sample data I've provided for you are, are some alternative build-outs that have increasingly denser and denser levels of intensity. Additionally, that same workflow you'll be able to use to evaluate alternatives. So it, instead of just a you know, range of intensities, they can be radically different concepts that you bring in from SketchUp. Your screen might not be identical to mine. And this is the case with most pieces of software. They have a nice window management system. I'm going to be using the, the tall windows layout, which looks like this. And we'll kind of push these over. I hate this project default view, and I am sorry that it's the default, but we're already changing it. I like this one column thing. We just get these big icons in there, and it's not really efficient. And we, right now, the project's going to be really nice and short and sweet. By the end of it, by the end of our template, we're going to end up with quite a few things, and it's really nice when we can kind of use these little disclosure triangles to hide and show stuff uh, a little more efficiently. Um, so this is the layout I like. We come in here with a sample scene. Just to touch briefly on kind of the organization of, and what's going on here, our sample scene is the same as this sample scene. We can change this to anything we like. To me, it bothers me a touch that it's just sample scene, so we'll change this to... We click in here and call it, how about just VR? And you can see it changes up here. We have a camera and a directional light. So we're going to start to import stuff. And the first thing we're going to be bringing in is our SketchUp model. So let's make a place for it. So packages, just so you know and you, you don't delete this out of, out of animosity, is something that are kind of a collection of tools and scripts that Unity thinks you should have. And it uses this to help you bring in more additional things that are maybe not essential for every project, but are definitely essential for a lot of projects. So we'll just kind of ignore that and tuck that off to the side. We're going to be working inside this assets folder. So we're going to right click there and choose create folder. And the first thing is going to be SketchUp. Inside of the course three Unity folder, you'll find a SketchUp sample models folder. And this is really intended to be the, a really meaningful collection of data for you to use in this course that is real world based. Sometimes it's really frustrating when you get sample data that's so tiny that it, it alleviates the possibility of any problems arising. This is you know, sufficiently big that uh, if we do things really poorly, we'll have bad performance in our uh, VR application, uh, which is why I like it. Additionally, it's pretty cool and it was you know, part of a really uh, good project. We're gonna be bringing in this VR demo exploded, EXP for exploded, where we left off in the last course, remember, we took our working SketchUp file and we started to explode down all of the groups into this right level of hierarchy. And now we'll get to see why that's relevant. So you can just click and drag and drop it right into the SketchUp folder and it will import. Uh, this was not an insignificantly sized file, so there will be, uh, you know, you should experience at least a little bit of loading time for it. So where did that go? I think is a good question that you should ask right out of the gate. And what's really nice is Unity makes it easy for us to kind of dig back in and see where these files really exist. So if you were to right click and choose Show and Explorer, it'll open up. So here's our, our VR00 folder we made, VR, the name of that project, Assets, as you can see, and then SketchUp. And then here is that, that file. It's literally the identical SketchUp file. It just made a copy of there of that and then start to import it and process it a little bit. And what's really cool, if we need to make changes to it, 
we can just literally double click on this SketchUp file from the folder and start editing a SketchUp file. The same with Photoshop you know, files or up images or, or most other assets that come from a, another location in which we can edit them easily. I would caution you though to not muck around in the folder in the assets folder. There are a lot of things like, for example, this metadata file is something that Unity made that if it were to get deleted would change things in your application. So yes, it's okay to open up things from here or even replace things. If you wanted to maybe open up your original SketchUp model and make those changes and then drag a copy in here, that would be acceptable. One other thing to note is that when you make deletions from here, which you can do from time to time, you'll make resources or have things that are, are no longer relevant. If you right click on them and choose to delete or select them and hit, hit the delete key, it's worth noting that that file actually goes into the trash can. Uh, let's see, somewhere in here, all kinds of stuff. Here it is, VR demo explosion. So there is a little bit of an undo for that kind of thing. Uh, these other files, like the SketchUp metadata, will get cleaned up um, after another round of saving. Let's drag that back in there while well, we still can. And uh, move on. The way we get our SketchUp model into the scene is simply by dragging it from our project view into our hierarchy. And this is really our scene hierarchy, it should be stated. And you can see it should instantly come in, and we can use the ASW. D keys or the arrow keys to navigate around when we're holding down the right mouse, uh, the right mouse button. So the right mouse button will let us kind of orbit around, and then these keys will let us sort of fly, if kind of in a first-person perspective, which is an easy way to kind of navigate around and, and check out different materials and make you know zooming close to stuff. As you can see, the textures aren't quite there yet. We're going to be getting to that in just a second. One of the reasons that we drag the sketch a file into the hierarchy as opposed into the scene is that when we drag it into the scene it's going to start to try to position things where we drop them like in, in a 3D space versus dragging them directly into the hierarchy means it'll preserve its location. There's a good reason to sometimes drag things into the scene if it's like a car model or things that you're going to be placing that you're replicating a number of but for this kind of data that is kind of a CAN model we're going to want to drag it just directly into the hierarchy. Let's explore the import dialog for our SketchUp model. So when you click on our SketchUp model in the project window and look in the inspector, we have a lot of options in here. We're gonna be going through most of these. Out of the gate, generate back faces. We were talking about not being overly heavy with our model and making sure that we texture only the side that we want, the front sides. This button, generate back faces, would force all of the surfaces to have two sides. And again, that not something that we want. I, there would be very, very limited reasons when you would want to do that. Merge coplanar faces is almost identical to what SketchUp does with merge coplanar faces. As, you, as you've seen when you import different 3D content, it'll give you that checkbox option to merge similar triangles that have identical textures together. It'll do the same thing in here. In this model, we've already modeled it really pretty efficiently, so you won't be able to see any impact on it, but that's what it does. Unit conversion. As we mentioned earlier, SketchUp likes to save its, its units as inches by default, which is, again, a little bit of an oddity. We and Unity both know that, and that's why this relationship's already set in here. So if you see the scale factor down here, it is going to be changing our inches to meters. Unfortunately, Unity is really distance unit agnostic except for some things when it comes to physics. The virtual reality system is another one. There are workarounds for it, but I think that they're a little advanced for kind of an introduction to this. So we're, what we're gonna be doing is just letting Unity convert our model that we made probably in feet, saved in inches, and then absorbed into here. We're gonna let it convert that to meters. We won't see the difference in here, obviously, but if we were to make, say, a cube from scratch and made it just one unit in, in every dimension, it would be the equivalent of you know, three and a third feet tall. So that's worth noting. And that is what the scale factor gets us. So one meter equals really you know, one unit in our unity universe, which in turn you know, gives us this ratio. We're gonna skip the rest of these. Most of these don't even affect SketchUp models. Um, we're not going to be worrying about any of this stuff because this has to do with writing and editing uh, model files uh, you know, from the graphics card. The geometry, we're going to keep all the same for right now. 
There are some good smoothing options here that we can touch on in a later course. Smoothing angles. The next thing that we were going to care about at all is this generate light map UVs. And really, we're going to get to that in the very next course. Because this data is relatively manageable, we're going to approach it from a real-time lighting perspective and not a baked lighting solution, which we'll get to. And then the last thing here is this generate colliders. And we will be touching on that in this. And that's what lets our objects have physical interactions. It is a little costly for the software to process constantly physics interactions on everything. So we're really going to just associate those with limited, uh, a limited number of shapes. The ground plane that we're going to be standing on is going to be one of those. But for our model in general right now, we're going to leave this alone. As you can see in this model, we have only the alternative existing being shown. And that's because in that SketchUp model, we had saved it last with all of the other alternatives turned off. And this is a good opportunity to show you how editing if I double click on this, so here's that file opened directly from the assets folder. And you can see we left it with the existing layer grouping turned on. What we have to do to change that so it natively imports all of the different groups is just check on all of these layers here on the side. And you can see they're overlapping and it's a, it's a big mess. All we have to do then is hit save and Unity will start immediately re-importing this model. So save. One of the things that I do like about this feature that by default the different geometry that's hidden is, is not imported by default is when you're divvying up your workload and letting multiple people work on it, they each can have reference layers that are hidden that help you each you know, reference your particular part of the work to the greater whole. Simply just hide those, save it, and then import their portions, and you'll be ready to go, which is a nice feature, I think. And now, as you can see, without having to touch anything, you can see underneath our scene hierarchy, the VR demo explosion, all those different alternatives have been brought in. Admittedly, in here, it's a little chaotic and jumbled looking and can be a bit frustrating. So I would suggest that we just temporarily turn off those some uh, superfluous ones. So let's maybe select alternative F through B. And this little checkbox here is the one that indicates whether it's active or not. We haven't deleted it. We've literally just kind of hidden it. And now we're down to just alternative one. With that, let's jump into materials.